This is your first English language IGCSE revision session. We're going to do 10 of them and by the end of it, you'll feel more confident tackling the exam. OK, today we're going to look at Young and Dyslexic by Ben Zephaniah. We're just going to look at the first few paragraphs in this session. Young and Dyslexic, you've got it going on. As a child, I suffered, but learned to turn dyslexia to my advantage, to see the world more creatively. We are the architects, we are the designers. I'm of the generation where teachers didn't know what dyslexia was. The big problem with the education system then was that there was no compassion, no understanding and no humanity. I don't look back and feel angry with the teachers. The ones who wanted to have an individual approach weren't allowed to. The idea of being kind and thoughtful and listening to problems just wasn't done. The past is a different kind of country. At school, my ideas always contradicted the teachers. I remember one teacher saying that human beings sleep for one third of their life. And I put my hand up and said, if there's a God, isn't that a design fault? If you've built something, you want efficiency. If I was God, I would have designed sleep so we could stay awake. Then good people could do one third more good in the world. The teacher said, shut up, stupid boy. Bad people would do one third more bad. I thought I'd put in a good idea. I just wasn't being creative. She also had a point. But the thing was, she called me stupid for even thinking about it. I remember a teacher talking about Africa and the local savages. And I would say, who are you to talk about savages? She would say, how dare you challenge me? And that would get me into trouble. OK, we're just going to pick out a few things from this, these first few paragraphs then to show you the kind of points that you could make in question four of your exam. But of course, when you're in question five, when you're also comparing it to the other text, you could equally well make those points there as well. OK. First of all, it starts off with this emotive verb suffered. So right from the beginning, it says as a child. So it's kind of emphasising his vulnerability at that point, And it makes you feel a degree of sympathy for him. So as a child, I suffered, but learned to turn dyslexia to my advantage to see the world more creatively. Then we get this key uh, sentence, which he returns to at the end of the whole passage, doesn't he? We are the architects, we are the designers. Now, first of all, you can, in terms of linguistic techniques, you could call this anaphora. Okay, so anaphora is when you, you start sentences um, with the same word or phrases or start clauses with the same word or phrases. And you can see you've got we are the, we are the. It's also because the, the structure of each clause is repeated. It's almost like um, they're, they're structured in exactly the same way. You can call that syntactic parallelism. Yeah, so in an exam we would say Ben Zephaniah uses anaphora and syntactic parallelism when he writes, we are the architects, we are the designers. And then try and say, well, what does that emphasise? Well, it emphasises this idea that, that being dyslexic it isn't necessarily a disadvantage. disadvantage. There could be positive things about it because it can boost your creativity. And there's a sense, in terms of his tone there, there's kind of like a sense of pride, isn't there? Um, and a sense of uh, motivating people to feel that they're, they've got huge potential and they can really do something with their lives. OK, he then goes on to talk about his experience in school. And at one point he says um, uh, in the education system at the time, when he was growing up, he was saying there's no compassion, no understanding and no humanity. And twice here he uses lists of three or you could call them tripartite sequences. You've probably got your own term for that. But lists of three or tripartite sequences. Look at this. No compassion, no understanding and no humanity. And then later on, he says, the idea of being kind and thoughtful and listening. We've got another list of three there as well, haven't we? Um, and in both cases, he's, in the first case, he's emphasising this idea, oh, what a bleak place this was, the education system was, when he was growing up. So that's the point that you can make about that. Um, he then, however, says, I don't look back and feel angry with the teachers. That's interesting, isn't it? Um, and I think that kind of gets him, gets you on side as a reader. If... If the whole thing was him ranting and sounding really angry and bitter and resentful, you might tolerate that for some time. But then after a while, you might you might not want to carry on reading. And I think somehow if he says, look, I was treated badly. There were things that were wrong with the education system and it had a negative impact on me. But I rose above it. Do you know, if, if he actually says, yeah, I, I know that there were things wrong, but I'm not just going to blame everyone. I'm not just going to be bitter and vengeful and, and rant about the whole thing. 
I'm going to place this within the context at the time and say, look, there were some good teachers, but actually they didn't have the scope or the, 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 the opportunity to do what they wanted to do necessarily. He's being very balanced, isn't he? I think, I think what I would say. Um, he's, he's trying to look at it from a kind of wider perspective rather than just getting caught up in the anger. And that's one of the things that I would say about that. He then later on says, the idea of being kind and thoughtful and listening to problems. Um, uh, here, as well as it being a list of three, you could say this and, and, and repetition is interesting. And you can call that polysyndetic coordination. Polysyndetic coordination. Um, when you're using and more than once. Um, and I suppose he's suggesting, you know, the, the, the education system, his experience in school was so radically different from what yours is now, to some extent. You might think you have a tough time at school sometimes, but he's saying, oh, you have no idea what it was like. It hadn't even occurred to people to kind of show sympathy and empathy and understanding at times in the classrooms that he was in. OK, so he's trying to really draw a contrast. And what he's doing is actually saying, look, this was almost like a different world. It was like another country. And he makes that point, doesn't he, when he uses this metaphor at the end here, um, the past is a different kind of country. Um, that's actually a, a reference to a, a line from a book. But the main point is that you can say um, that he's, he's kept saying it was like another world, like another country, where the culture was very different. Um, the world now is a very different place, is what he's trying to say, isn't it? Um, he then gives um, some anecdotes, some examples from his own experience, doesn't he? And he says, if there's a God, isn't that a design fault if you build something? This is him um, recounting a conversation that he had with teachers at the time. And he's used his direct speech to do that, doesn't he? OK, so he uses direct speech. And one of the points that you can make here about this is that um, he's, uh, he's deliberately quoting exactly what was said. Um, you know, he's, he's quoting the exact words and, and giving you, um, you know, an actual conversation he had with a teacher because he wants to make it real. He wants to engage you and kind of like make you feel as if you're there at that moment, listening into that conversation. Um, and then he actually says what the teacher said back to him, that the teacher said, shut up, stupid boy. And here we can talk about the teacher using an imperative, this shut up, one of these commanding verbs is called an imperative, isn't it? and using quite derogatory language by calling him stupid boy. Um, and that, again, kind of creates maybe a sort of sense of sympathy for him, doesn't it? He then goes on to talk about how, um, at times, he challenged the way that teachers, the, the language that teachers were using and the things that they were saying. He says, I remember a teacher talking about Africa and the local savages, and I would say, who are you to talk about savages? He's picking up on the idea of this being like a, a derogatory, um, racist term to use and the way that Africa and Africans were being spoken about. And he's challenging it quite rightly, um, and, uh, but it got him into trouble. So he's also talking about actually being the victim of racism and prejudice in that sense as well, isn't he? Um, and so it's interesting here, the focus is on his dyslexia, isn't it? But there are other aspects of, of him and his experience growing up and his identity that he also talks about um, that gives you the fuller picture of, of his experience growing up and what that, you know, what that entailed for him. So hopefully that gives you a few things. What you need to do is highlight those um, and make sure you're confident saying what you, what you can about them. Um, practice writing that now. So rather than just listening to me, what you could do is, is have that in front of you if you want to, or just have the plain text from your anthology, okay? And have a go at turning that into a paragraph or two that could be a, a section of an answer for question four. In the exam, you're going to need to write about it. So if you have a go at writing about it now, you're doing what you need to do in the exam. Just listening and being passive is not going to help you anywhere near as much as actually actively writing. It only needs to take you like about six or seven minutes. OK, have a go at turning those points into some sentences into a paragraph or two now. And that'll be really useful. Um, the other thing, if you want to look in more detail, you can see on my YouTube channel that there's, um, there's another video which gives you 10 points in Young Dyslexic, which will go through the rest of the text if you want to. Okay, that's great. See you tomorrow.